my name is Lisa Fultz and I'm the soil microbiologist of cropping systems at Louisiana State University Ag Center. I'm actually based in Baton Rouge, but today we're here in St. Joe, Louisiana at the Northeast Research Station um, to do a little bit of an update on a project for the Taylor Foundation that we've been working on and also look at some of the cover crops that we have here in the field. Um, so last year, um, some of you may have seen, we got a very nice grant from the Patrick F. Taylor Foundation to support the demonstration um, and implementation of demonstration farms um, at grain and cotton production and sugarcane production sites here in the state of Louisiana. Now one of those is located in um, the northeast region, north of Newelton, Louisiana, where we're looking, working with the Hardwick family and on their farm um, looking at cotton and grain production and implementing best management practices in those fields. And so, so far what we've done last year to start the project, they went in, rehipped all of their beds, and then we planted cover crops on about half of their field. Uh, at this time of the year, we've actually gone in and terminated those cover crops so that they can start planting their cotton this year. One thing we'll be doing in the next week or so is actually putting out nutrient rich strips. We'll be doing this because they are planting cotton for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur to help make better nutrient recommendations for those fields. Um, other things that we're going to be doing for that site is implementing uh, water quality testing and te pulling samples from runoff. And so one thing we are working on is putting in automated samplers that will allow us to measure the amount of runoff from the fields, the amount of sediment that's in those, as well as the nutrient content of that material. Now today what I want you to see is a trial we have here at the Northeast Research Station that looks at the cover crop similar to what we planted at um, the Somerset Plantation at our grain and cotton model farm, um, but in a couple of different scenarios. So here to my right, um, we have areas that have been planted into a variety of legume cover crops and overseeded with cereal rye. And this area has actually been planted um, brought, using broadcast methods. And so what you can see is that we have, we do have stands of all of our covers and our cereal gra rye grass <clears throat> is very patchy. Um, and you can see the sort of the legumes coming up between that. Now over here to my left, we have the exact same setup, but the difference that was we drill seeded all of this. And so you can see we have a much more um, uniform, taller stand of our, our ryegrass, or sorry, cereal rye, not ryegrass. Um, and you can't see it very well, but if you were to get into some of these different plots, you can actually see the legume cover crops. In particular, I'm standing next to one that has some hairy vetch in it, and it's climbing up that cereal ryegrass very nicely. And we had some really nice stands um, in this area. We uh, generally wouldn't let this go quite as long as we've gone this year. Um, you can see some of it is starting to head out, particularly our crimson clover. Um, but this is about the time that we would start terminating if we were going to be planting into cotton. Mm -hmm. 